Hello guys and gals, and welcome! Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're going to be going over another one of the Mythic Uniques, that's right. This is one of the new ones, it's called the Air of Perdition. The Air of Perdition is a helmet, um, which before we get into the actual item at all, uh, I feel like we should go take a look at the graphics for this particular item, because quite honestly, um, it is absolutely amazing. It, the... Not only just like how it looks, but also how it dies. So I'd like to go over this. I know I don't normally cover like the graphics of an item, but I do feel like this is one that you're probably going to want to get in your repertoire of items uh, because the Air of Perdition does have some very pretty die options. So let's go over these together. Uh, where is my Air of Perdition? There you are. So first off, it kind of resembles like a kind of like a Viking winged helmet like Valkyrie kind of style. It's got like the spike on the stop and it's got like the horse hair thing coming out the back. It's got like a chain mesh coming on the back of the neck and whatnot. And the helmet itself um, has a lot of die options. I mean, first off, let's take a look at what it looks like with no die options. Um, as you can see, it has like gold inlay, the wings are gold, right? And then it has like a, you know, like a steel kind of thing going on there. The chain is like black, right? Well, every single time you dye it, it just changes so very well. Um, all the dye options are just so cool with this particular item because it really just kind of exemplifies the fine, you know, like intricate work on the helmet. Um, some of them are really cool, by the way. Like, I really like the sunrise option. It's like a blue kind of a leather there. And then uh, has some very interesting... <laughs> like, details. Like, this right here turns red. Um, you got the purple. The uh, all silver. Uh, kind of like silvery gray. And then, of course, we've got... Uh, this one, there's even like, as you can see, there's even like a slightly different color from the wings to the actual like accent of the wings, which is rather interesting. Um, all very, very cool. The, the helmet itself is definitely something that you're going to want to destroy at least once so that you can get that in your, your panel here for um, putting on multiple characters. It's just a really nice helmet that you can put on all the characters. This one is uh, Blue Royal Mariner absolutely beautiful looking as you can see the the highlight on the wings very pretty with the blue color there i've seen a lot of people rocking this helmet this season um, just simply because it's just it has so many cool die options fits into so many various sets you know it's just got a lot of really cool stuff going on for it so really nice graphic like just before we get into the helmet itself just a really nice graphic that you're going to put on characters i've actually designed a couple characters with this particular helmet uh, graphic in design. Now, the other things about this uh, helmet is that it also has some interesting mechanics. So as we go over the helmet and talk about how the mechanics work, there's some, there's some fun to be had there in group play, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, so first off, as you can see, mine is already masterworked to its maximum. Um, I do have a greater affix on the critical strike chance, and it goes as high as 44%. For this reason, since mine is fully masterworked, um, let's take a look at a non-masterworked Helm of Perdition. Um, so we can get a difference in the, the stats. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, so here is, um, what is this? The, pretty sure that's correct. Yeah. So it's, as you can see, it's 200% damage to angels and demons, 20% critical strike chance, 20% uh, lucky hit chance, 20% movement speed, and plus 2 to core skills. Um, this, of course, goes very high when you get your masterworks and everything in place. As you can see, mine's at 44% crit chance. To put that in perspective, um, I'm currently, with my crit chance on this particular character, I'm at 13.5%. If I equip this helmet, I go to 57.5% crit chance. The helmet alone like just by itself is enough to almost completely cover most of your critical strike chance needs on most characters and can easily help you reach a 100% crit strike chance, which is quite interesting. Well, the lucky hit chance, of course, can be very nice if you're doing a lucky hit build, although it does kind of like 
keep you from being able to use one of the best lucky hit items in the game, pretty much, which is like Andariel's Visage, because it consumes the same socket. Um, it also has that movement speed on it, which is really fun, and for the Spiritborn this season, the movement speed is actually a multiplier with the Brilliance passive. The Brilliance um, passive gives you a nice multiplier depending on your movement speed bonus and how many points you have in Brilliance, so you can get a huge bonus there as well. On top of this, it also gives you plus three to core skills. Um, plus two base, if you get a greater, I believe it goes up to plus three, and then you can masterwork it, and you can get it up even higher than that. It's not as good as the Shaco's plus four to all, but it does potentially have the ability to roll higher than the Shaco's plus four to all. So do keep that in mind. Uh, because if you get, and uh, let's bring up a yay old calculator, um, if you get a three, which is the greater affix, um, it actually works off of the two though, so keep this in mind. Um, and if you were to fully masterwork it for 45%, and then you also maybe triple master worked it at uh, 25, 25, and 25, which is 75. So 75 uh, plus 45 is a total of 120%. So you get 2 plus 120%. Um, and on top of that, you get the original plus 1 for the greater affix, which would bring that up to a total of 5. So you could potentially get 5 core skills, which does outpace this over the Harlequin Crest four core skills only. So if you are looking for the highest amount of core skills that you can possibly get, this actually beats Harlequin Crest. Now Harlequin Crest does have some other very nice bonuses. That, uh, it has maximum resource. It has armor, which is very important this season, especially with the unyielding hits, which unyielding hits uh, scales your damage based on armor, which is very, 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 very nice. And um, on top of this, you also get you know massive amounts of cooldown reduction. So it's still a hot competition between the two helmets. The other effect, though, that Air Perdition has is that it says succumb to the hatred and earn your mother's favor, increasing your damage dealt by 60% times, uh, slaughter enemies to briefly steal mother's favor from nearby allies. Now, when you put this helmet on, it actually shows up on the bar. So if you look down here, um, you'll see it says damage empowered by Lilith. This means that you're going to get that 60% multiplier to all of your skills and abilities. And it's actually a pretty powerful multiplier. Um, and a lot of characters are probably going to want to utilize this this season because unlike Harlequin Crest, which mainly just gives um, defensive stats, a little bit of offensive stats, uh, but mainly defensive stats, Air of Perdition is more of an offensive helmet, giving you things like critical strike chance, lucky hit chance, core skills, as well as the multiplier. So it does fit really nicely in the helmet like arsenal because uh, it offers you something that the other helmets may not. Now, Critical Strike Chance itself might not necessarily be a very good stat for you depending on your character. Some characters struggle with Critical Strike Chance. Other characters have so much Critical Strike Chance they don't know what to do with it. Um, if you're one of those characters that has already like 60 or 50 or 80% Critical Strike Chance without trying, then an additional 44% Critical Strike Chance isn't really that great for you. Um, however, if you're a character that's struggling to get Critical Strike Chance, then it might be more interesting. Mr. Goody Two Shoes, Mr. Goody Two Shoes! Ginger Evil Mentor here. Why bother farming when you can go to MMOEXP.com and simply purchase your items and gold? GGM would have you farm the items, what a pathetic being. Use code GEM, Ginger Evil Mentor, for 6% off your entire purchase. And don't tell Ginger Gaming Mentor that I was here. Um, core skills, of course, applies to anything with the core skill tag. And keep this in mind because there's a lot of skills these days that convert from core, from like other skills to core skills. Like, for instance, in the Spiritborn specifically, um, the payback ability can be converted into a core skill via poised payback, which means that you could get plus core skills for that. On top of that, you can also convert touch of death into a core skill with poised touch of death. Um, there is the Weapon Mastery um, Third Blade on the Barbarian that can convert most of the Weapon Mastery skills into core skills. The Necromancer's um, Bone Spirit is a core skill these days. Kick can be converted into a core skill via one of its passives, um, and so forth and so on. So core skills have become, plus core skills generic, has become more powerful than ever than in previous patches because of all the ways that you could convert skills into core skills and get those bonuses. Um, now, the other thing about this is that the Mother's Favor can be stolen 
So anyone who's wearing this helmet will get a 60 times multiplier when you're fighting together. However, if you're in a group and there is another person who has one of these helmets on, you can essentially take that buff from them, which means that they lose the 60% times multiplier for a few seconds, and the person who takes it gets the 60% multiplier, adding up to a 120% multiplier for that particular player. Now, interestingly enough, if you had a full group of people wearing Heirs of Perdition, um, it could be a fun little mini game, passing the buffs back and forth between each other, because, of course, if you have um, four people and you have 60 times four, if one person manages to grab all of the buffs, then they're going to have a massive 240% multiplier for the small duration of time that they've stolen the buff. So it could be a very fun little thing to do among a group of friends is everybody just puts on an air of perdition and you have fun stealing the buff back and forth between each other and doing massive amounts of damage while you have all of the buffs at the same time. Another interesting thing about this helmet is that it included the 200% damage to angels and demons. And yes, you're reading that correctly, angels. Now, supposedly that's a bit of a tease, maybe about upcoming content, that we may eventually be fighting angels at some point. Uh, so I guess we'll find out. But angels and demons, not just demons. Some people have speculated that the angels and demons could be referring to um, Inarius, who was supposedly killed in hell. But there's a very good chance that he's been consumed by hell instead. And in that case, he may be corrupted and turn into a form of iswal type monster uh the iswal monster was essentially one of the angels that got corrupted in diablo 2 and you ended up fighting him um at some point um if you guys haven't seen iswal um iswal from d2 is a a beast of a monster um he is the one that goes down into the depths of hell to stop them from forging a weapon that's supposedly better than his which i'm pretty sure was as your wrath um, the weapon that they were forging was actually Shadow Fang, which is not even anywhere near as good as as your wrath. It's not even a contest. But uh, Iswal betrayed everybody. He ended up in hell. He ended up converted into like a demon sort of a monster, right? I imagine the same kind of thing could potentially happen to Iswal. Of course, we have, you know, a already a precedent in place. So it's interesting to note that it does say angels as well as demons. Uh, the flavor text on this says, Beware false prophets donned as sheep, yet bearing the stench of wolves. Thou shalt know them by their fruits, for a tree of good cannot produce evil, nor thorns yield a harvest sweet and fair. And I think that's pretty much it for this helmet. Um, where can you get it? Well, you can get this helmet at any of the bosses. Um, you can get it at Beast in the Ice, you can get it at uh, Lord Seer, you can get it at Grigore, you could also potentially get it at uh, Varshan, and I can show you all those locations really quickly. So Grigore is right here, south of Kedbardu. Um, you can also find uh, Beast in the Ice right here at the Glacial Fissure, south of Kyovashad. Um, Lord Zir is north of Elezna. He's right here in the Darkened Way. And finally, Varshan is the easiest of all because he's literally right next to the Tree of Whispers in the Malignant Burrow. Um, and then there's Duriel and Indariel. Duriel and Indariel have been confirmed, for at least for Season 6, to have the a double chance to drop Mythic Uniques. Um, and Dariel is right here, uh, just east of Tarsarak. And Duriel is just east of... Giacul right here in the maggot layer or the uh, I think it's called the world's boobo or something like that. It's a very silly a silly name. Um, you can also potentially craft yourself air of perdition. So that is an option as well. If you go to the jeweler, um, you can make one specifically or you can potentially gamble for one at the blacksmith. The blacksmith has a recipe in here um, where he can potentially make a box. So this is a mythic unique cache. You do need two resplendent sparks for this. You do get two resplendent sparks for e this season. They did not allow for a farming session for resplendent sparks like the previous seasons, but you can get one resplendent spark 
from the Season Journey box by completing the Season Journey here. Um, the final box right here says contains a Resplendent Spark. It's called the Destroyer's Cache. Also, Lilith gives a Resplendent Spark, but for some reason she had been bugged, and they basically just gave everybody a Spark. So if you check your materials list and you look at your Resplendent Sparks, you should have at least one Res Resplendent Spark by default, and you just need to complete your season journey to get the other one. Now, that random one, no guarantee you're going to get an Air of Perdition. You can get any of them, right? But you could also potentially spend your two sparks by crafting this particular item. All of the items have different crafting requirements. You can right-click on them, which will show you the crafting requirements. And the Air of Perdition, as you can see, is six jaw runes six Queh runes, and six Gar runes. Um, so you're going to have to get your hands on six of those each to be able to craft yourself an Air of Perdition with two Resplendent Sparks. Um, you can get greater affixes from crafting the Mythics. I've actually seen quite a few, like two or three or even four from crafting a Mythic. So it's just the same as finding them, and you, know, you have just as good of a chance as getting something that you're looking for as something that you're not. Um, greater affix flies and if you happen to have one that you'd like to destroy uh, for a spark that works too because then you can get the the uh, unique graphic so that you can use that in the wardrobe on your character i actually have a character um, that i've kind of set up with this uh, this one right here in the shade i kind of set her up a whole costume i think i recently took her helmet off for some reason so that's why she's not wearing it at this particular moment. Yes, she had, uh, I think, Andariel's visage on her head, so her cosmetic for that is missing. I've been swapping items between characters all season because, you know, um, if you got a Mythic Unique, you're going to usually end up swapping that between your characters, right? Uh, but let me just go ahead and put on, like, any helmet. It really doesn't matter. Do I have any helmet I can put on? The uh, locked items, you know what, let's do a little bonus uh, thing here. I, I could put this one on, but I'm going to do a little bonus thing here. Real quick. I'm going to show you um, how you can change an item when it is locked. All right, so locked items are often locked for specific reasons, either because they have a stat on them, which is locked specifically to that character. In this particular case, it's probably the Vigor per second, so we're going to go over to the Enchanting window, and I'm just going to enchant off this Vigor per second, which is a specific Spirit Porn stat. And um, if I enchant off this Vigor per second, uh, actually, I kind of wanted to keep that Vigor per second. Let me use a different one. Because that is a greater affix. And if you if you enchant a greater affix, it will immediately um, disable it from being used. So let's do this one. Um, so in this particular case, we have one that is locked to Barbarian. It could be locked because of the strength, but it could also be locked because of another reason. Usually what I do is I just re-roll the enchantment first because this is easy. So I'm just going to put anything on here, just a generic aspect like disobedience. Um, and it's still locked. And in that case, it might be the strength because that is a barbarian stat. Although a lot of the times you can just re-roll anything and it will work. Um, and we're just going to change this to dexterity. And as you can see now, it's no longer bound to the Barbarian. Um, there, you, With this, you can usually unbind pretty much any item. Just a little bonus for you guys that are watching this video. If you have any items that are bound, um, this is something that you can do to unbind them, is basically enchant them or change the aspect on them or both. I have found that it's not static. Like sometimes you will change the codex and it doesn't remove the tag. Sometimes you will enchant the item and it doesn't remove the tag. Sometimes you have to do both for it to remove the tag. Sometimes it only requires one or the other. Um, it really depends on what's going on with the item. But you can very easily remove the class requirement from most legendaries um, by using these two options. Uh, let's go ahead and look at like my character now that I got the helmet on. Um, so as you can see... I picked out a, uh, a matching outfit with this particular helmet. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, you can get uh, some pretty good outfits going with this Helm of Perdition. It fits really nicely with this particular set. looks like a 
you know, like a Viking or like Valkyrie warrior or something like that. That's fine with me. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals joining me for these videos. Um, and as always, hit that like button and that subscribe button if you enjoy the content. And uh, keep watching. Thank you.